What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Devils in the Details. I'm BD, wishing you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Elf was released on November 7, 2003 by New Line Cinema. It was produced by Guy Walks Into a Bar Productions. The cinematography was handled by Greg Gardner, who has a pretty extensive resume, including Men in Black 2. The music, courtesy of John Debney, also with a very extensive career. In fact, you can hear his latest work if you're a fan of Seth MacFarlane's The Orville. Elf was given a $33 million budget, upon which it generated over $220 million at the box office. It eventually also spawned a very successful theater run as a musical that ran on Broadway during the holiday season of 2010. Filming took place in New York City as well as in Vancouver and at Riverview Hospital in Coquitlam, British Columbia. When movie makers set out to make a Christmas movie, they generally set out to make one with staying power, one that will be pulled out every year, watched and enjoyed over and over again. I mean, let's face it, we all have our favorites. I actually have two or three that I try to get to every year. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. And then there's the staples, the classics, the ones you can't deny. The ones that are still great after all these years, no matter how many times you watch them. But writing and filming a great Christmas movie isn't an easy thing to do. There's so many ingredients that need to be just right for everything to work out once the film is ready to be edited and put together. The music, the story, the character arcs, the casting, the directing, the freedom of creating and being allowed and encouraged to ad lib and improvise, to be able to take something great and make it even better. The rule of thumb usually is shoot it the way it's written once and shoot it again with alternatives. Once it's all done and it's all stitched back together, you're completely immersed in the film. The best movies are the ones that you don't even realize you're watching a movie. A great film makes you care about its characters, its story, and what is going to happen to everyone and how its story will resolve and conclude. Your job as a director is to tell a story. The challenge of directing a film is to make the audience feel like they're in the story and not pay attention to any of these things that all this work goes into. Elf, to me, is one of those movies. To me, it's the perfect Christmas movie. And of course, because of the cancer in me, oh God, no, dude, no. Kids around watching, seriously. Ugh. Because I'm a cancer, I have an unquenchable thirst for details, a ravenous, insatiable sense of curiosity. And because of that, of course, I had to go find out everything I could about this film. Things like the cotton balls that Buddy eats while in a doctor's office were actually cotton candy that had not been dyed yet. Buddy, don't eat those. Oh. The design for Santa's workshop, as well as the elf uniforms, come from the 1964 Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer TV special. The elf uniforms completely mirror the ones from that television special. Most of the animals in the North Pole are also designed to look like the same form of stop-motion animation used in Rudolph. Bye, guys. Bye, buddy. Bye, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Elf is the story about an orphan child named Buddy. One night on Christmas Eve in the orphanage, Buddy stowed away in Santa's sack and ended up at the North Pole. Later as an adult human who happened to be raised by elves, he felt that he needed to find his real dad. So Santa allowed him to go to New York City to search for and find his birth father, Walter Hobbs. Hobbs had always been on Santa's naughty list for being a heartless jerk. Hobbs had no idea that Buddy was even born. Buddy, meanwhile, experiences the delights of New York City and human culture as only an elf could. When Walter's relationship with Buddy interferes with his job, he's forced to reevaluate his priorities. Buddy the elf, what's your favorite color? Put that down. Hello? Hello? 
David Berenbaum wrote Elf in 1996 as a spec, which is basically a non-commissioned, unsolicited screenplay. thought it'd be very amusing to see a large elf walking around Manhattan, and it just kind of bounced around for many years. When you're writing a script, you just kind of have to let your imagination take you there, take you where the story goes. Berenbaum, with the help of producer John Berg, spent the next few years developing the script, polishing it, and shaping it into the little gem that it would eventually turn out to be. Like most Hollywood scripts, Elf underwent uncredited rewrites by Scott Armstrong, Chris Henchy, and the writing team of Adam McKay and Will Ferrell. Ferrell was not the first actor cast as Buddy. Originally, it was Jim Carrey that was attached to play the role, but Carrey turned it down. And John Favreau, who ended up in the director's chair, was not the first director that was offered the job. The offer first went to Terry Zwigoff, who also turned it down in favor of filming another Christmas movie called Bad Santa. In the special effects department, Elf utilized quite a few different techniques to achieve their goals, such as forced perspective, where one actor is placed in the background of a scene and the other is placed in the foreground, giving the illusion that the actor in the background is much smaller compared to the actor that is in the foreground, but also by keeping everything in focus, essentially tricking the eye. I wonder if they used a multi-optic diopter. You're not an elf. What, what, what do you mean I'm not an elf? The filmmakers also used scaled-down props and sets, again, to make Farrell's characters seem much larger than the others. And one of my personal favorite techniques, stop-motion animation. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. Bye. A fantastic cast was assembled for the film, Will Ferrell's portrayal of Buddy, the human that thinks he's an elf despite being four feet taller than everyone else, plays Buddy with the loving, optimistic, innocence and naivete you would expect from a character thrust into a world he's never seen before. James Caan's wonderful depiction of Walter Hobbs, Buddy's skeptical biological father who thinks Buddy's antics are a scam artist's attempt at a cash grab, but slowly comes to terms with the truth of who Buddy really is. Mary Steenburgen as Emily, Buddy's stepmother, proves that she is the only actress in the world who could welcome her husband's out-of-wedlock elf into her family and make us believe she means it. Her compassion is undeniable. Are you crazy? He cannot stay here. Clearly, he has some serious issues. We can't just throw him out in the snow. Why not? He loves the snow. He's told me 15 times. Walter, he's your son. We're also treated to Zoe Deschanel in the role of Joby. The director, John Favreau, had no idea that Zoe was also a singer, but once he found out, he added her talent to the script. I ought to say no, 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 Mind if I move in? At least I'm gonna say that I try. What's the sense of hurting my friend? I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. Papa Elf played by the illustrious Bob Newhart, captures the role of Buddy's adoptive father convincingly, loving the human baby and raising him as if he were his own. Though a Buddy grew twice as fast, he, he wasn't any different from the other children. <laughs> Daniel Tay as Buddy's newfound brother is great, leading us through some interesting subplots. You like her? Like who? The girl you're staring at. Oh. Uh, yeah. Why don't you ask her out? Faze on Love. The extremely charismatic and hilarious manager of Gimbel's department store had me in stitches with his deadpan deliveries. Okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh my god! Santa here? I know him. One of my all time favorite cameos, courtesy of Peter Dinklage highlighting one of my many favorite moments in the film. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. Wrong clip, Dan. Call me Elf one more time. He's an angry elf. That's better. And what would a Christmas movie be without Santa? Well, it would probably still be a Christmas movie, just one without Santa. Ed Asner, as Buddy's mentor, helps deliver the message that perhaps the world has grown too cynical, and that sometimes you just gotta have faith. Gotta have faith. Oh, I gotta have faith. 
Elf has everything that I look for in a great Christmas movie. It has a ton of heart, witty and hilarious moments, wonderful character arcs, a fresh and interesting story, three acts that culminate in a superb ending with a lighthearted message attached to it, all wrapped up in a nice little bow. Elf is definitely at the top of my list when asked what's my favorite Christmas movie. What I would like to know, which one's yours? Please let me know in the comment section down below. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Tip of the hat to our wonderful patrons. As the holiday season becomes busier for everyone, including the team here at DA, we will take this opportunity to spend some time with our friends and families and take a very short break. This episode was brought to you by Junior Teacod. I won't see you guys next Friday. I will, however, see you the following Friday. Stay safe and have fun.